the first thing that we are going to do is to let y be equal to fx, which means that we are going to be letting y to be equal to the expression of fx, which is x squared plus 2kx. But let's not forget that fx is not just the expression, but we should take into account of its domain also. So x is supposed to be bigger or equal to minus k in order for this equation to hold. And the next thing that we're going to do is to make x the subject. So x squared plus 2kx. I'm going to bring y over to this side. So this is equal to 0. We can either complete the square or we can make use of the completed square result, which is the quadratic formula to make x the subject. So x is going to be equal to minus 2k plus or minus square root of 2k squared minus for the coefficient of x squared, 1. Then after that, a term that is independent of x, which is minus y. So this is going to be divided by 2 times of the coefficient of x, so 2 times of 1. So we have a minus 2k plus or minus square root of. This is going to be 4k squared plus 4y. And this is going to be divided by 2. So this is equal to minus 2k plus or minus. Um, I'm going to factorize out 4. So square root of 4 is going to give us a 2. So we're going to be left with square root of k squared plus y here divided by 2, which means that x is going to be equal to this divided by this is minus k plus or minus. This divided by this is going to be square root of k squared plus y. And since this equation works for x to be bigger or equal to minus k, so minus k plus minus k minus, I'm going to choose plus so that x can be bigger than minus k. So this is going to be minus k plus square root of k square plus y. And like what we have just mentioned, this is because x is supposed to be bigger or equal to minus k. And this will give us the expression for f inverse which means that for f inverse x, this is going to be equal to minus k plus square root of k square plus x. And the next thing that we're going to do is to try to find the domain of f inverse. And we do know that the domain of f inverse is the same as the range of f. So let's try to find the range of f by working on this expression here. Let me write it down here. So for fx expression, this is equal to x squared plus 2kx. And I'm going to attempt to sketch the graph of y is equal to fx by completing the square to this expression because we know that this is a, this is a quadratic equation, quadratic expression. So the graph is going to be a parabola. It is going to be a parabola which is a smiley face, so it has a, it has a minimum point. So to find a minimum point by completing the square, we will be getting this as this plus k square minus k square. So we know that the minimum point is going to be at the point minus k and minus k square. And since x is supposed to be bigger or equal to minus k, the graph of y is equal to fx is going to be something like this. Okay, maybe let me draw the graph of y is equal to x squared plus 2kx first. So for this graph, it is going to be like this. Okay, a parabola, a smiley face where the minimum possible point here is minus k and minus k squared. So since for fx, x is supposed to be bigger or equal to minus k, that is why for fx, we're going to be looking at the part of the graph that is on this portion. So it is going to be something like this. This will be my graph of y is equal to fx, where the minimum point here is minus k and minus k squared. So looking at this, we can deduce the range of f, which will be giving us the domain of f inverse. And this is what the question is wanting. So domain of f inverse, which is the same as the range of f reading from my graph, all the possible y coordinates will be from minus k square onwards. So the range of f, which is going to represent for us the domain of f inverse, is going to be from minus k square 
all the way until infinity. For part two, we are going to be assuming k to be equal to minus two. So for f inverse that we have found in the previous part, it is going to be equal to, since k is minus two, so this is going to be two plus minus two squared is four. So square root of four plus x, where x is supposed to be bigger or equal to minus minus two squared. So big O equal to minus four. And in part two, we are going to be making use of this most likely to try to solve for x in f, g, x. So for f, g, x, f, g, x, which was given to us as 32, in order for us to solve for x, this can be a little bit tricky because if you were to try to find a composite function f, g, I guess maybe it is going to work, but it is probably going to be very tedious and I'm not even sure whether we will be able to derive the exact value of x if we were to solve the equation directly. So we're going to apply a small little trick, something that I've mentioned in the Achievers TV theory outline, which is this. We're going to make use of the fact that f inverse f x is equal to x, which means that whatever that is going to be inside when it goes through f inverse f, it is re going to remain as whatever it, whatever that was inside. So if I were to try to apply it to here, that means what we can do is to throw this entire function into f inverse. So I'm going to throw this entire thing into f inverse, which is going to be this. So if I were to do it to the left hand side, I will do the same thing to the right hand side. So f inverse 32. If I were to just rewrite this, it will be like f inverse f of gx. On the right hand side, it's going to be f inverse of 32. And like what we have mentioned, f inverse fx is going to be equal to x, which means that f inverse f gx is going to be equal to gx. So gx is equal to f inverse 32. And I think this is going to help us simplify the matter a little bit. So now we know that for gx here, this is going to be equal to f inverse 32, which is going to be 2 plus, making use of this, square root of 4 plus 32. So we have a square root of 36, which is 6. 6 plus 2, this is equal to 8. So gx is this. Now we have a 5 plus 7 square root of 1 minus x plus 1 square divided by 4 square. This is equal to 8. And I believe that this is going to be an equation which is easier for us to solve and getting the exact value of x as the result. So let's make x the subject. Moving 5 over to the other side, dividing by 7 across, I will be getting square root of 1 minus x plus 1 square divided by 4 square to be equal to 8 minus 5, 3, 3 divided by 7, 3 over 7. Squaring both sides, 1 minus x plus 1 square divided by 4 square. This is equal to 9 over 49. 3 square is 9, 7 square is 49, which means that x plus 1 square divided by 4 square is going to be 1 minus this. 1 minus this is equal to 40 over 49. 4 square, if I were to multiply across to the other side, I will be getting a 640 over 49. And I'm going to square root both sides. So I have a x plus 1 is going to be equal to plus or minus square root of this, which I'm going to write it as 64 over 49. This is perfect square in the numerator and the denominator multiply by 10, which means that this is going to be plus or minus 8 over 7 square root of 10. And now we have gotten the value for x. x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus 8 over 7 square root of 10. But before we end this question, let's do a quick check because we do know that x is supposed to be between minus 5 to 3 for the, for the function g. And for this composite function f, g, 
the domain of fg is the same as the domain of g so we want to make sure that x is between minus 5 to 3 in this particular equation so if you were to press this into the calculator both of this value minus 1 plus 8 over 7 square root of 10 minus 1 minus 8 over square root of 10 both of the values are between minus 5 and 3 so my answer is going to be this two